Namo Buddhaya, this is Sabina when I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 107. Uh, this is uh, title is with Moglana the Accountant. Uh, also titled Ganak Moglana Sutta. The link to the discourse is given in the description. So basically here, uh, uh, there was a Brahmin Moglana the Accountant who went up to the Buddha and he asked that, uh, suppose there are like, uh, there is a still long house where we see gradual progress down to the last step. So there is like a staircase, right? Now he says that amongst the Brahmins, there is a gradual progress of learning in the chanting. Among archers, there is a gradual process in archery. Among accountants, there is a gradual process in learning. So is it possible to similarly describe a gradual training, progress and practice in the teaching and training of the Buddha? So it is a very pertinent, pertinent question for all beginners like us who want to know a clarity on what is a gradual path in the teaching. So in this sutta, Buddha is giving that clarity to us. So Buddha says, yes, Brahmin, it is possible. Suppose, uh, so Buddha is giving a, tra uh, a example of a horse trainer that first, uh, who trains the horse. So first he gets used, uh, he makes it, he makes the horse get used to, then, so similarly, so the first instruction is, uh, mendicants to be ethical and restrained in the monastic code, conducting yourself well and seeking arms in suitable places. So the monastics, they have this uh, Vinaya code, monastic code, where they have a lot of rules uh, which they have to abide. They are very strict rules. As compared to lay people, for lay people, the minimum five rules are no killing, no stealing, no lying, no sexual misconduct, no drinking. These are the minimum five rules for lay people that we need to follow. But for monastics, there is a higher rule. So the first thing that is there is the uh, Buddha is saying the ethical conduct, right? That's the first thing. Second, Buddha says when they have ethical conduct, the realized one guides them further. Come mendicant, guard your sense doors. That means, see, all the sense doors, these five sense doors they, which we have, that gives rise to contact. Contact gives rise to desire and craving and everything. So what basically we have to do is that we have to guard our sense doors. If the sense doors are not guarded, then we will lose ourselves in the sense pleasures. So, guarding the sense doors. When you see, so Buddha is giving the example, when you see a sight with your eyes, for, so for example, you see a beautiful woman in front of you, instead of losing yourself in her beauty and, you know, feeling lustful and all, you don't get caught up in the features and details. If the faculty of sight was left unrestrained, bad, unskilled qualities of covetousness and displeasure would become overwhelming. For this reason, practice restraint, protect the faculty of sight and achieve restraint over it. And similarly for other like nose, ear, touch, everything. Then Buddha says, when they guard the sense doors, realized one guides them to eat in moderation. So eating in moderation is also a very, very important thing that is coming out. That reflecting in on the food, you should think that I don't eat this food for fun, indulgence, and adornment or decoration, but only to sustain my body and to sustain my spiritual practice. With that intention, we should eat our food. Then, next, when they eat in moderation, the realized one guides them to, guides them further, come mendicant, be committed to wakefulness. Practice walking and sitting meditation by the day, purifying your mind from obstacles. In the evening, continue to practice walking and sitting meditation. In the middle of the night, lie down in the lion's posture, on the right side. So you must have seen pictures of Buddha lying down, you know, with kneeling. So, Buddha says, said to his, to the mendicants also, to lie down in on the right side, placing one foot on top of the other, mindful and aware, and focused on the time of getting up. In late part of the night, get up and continue to practice walk, walking. So, walking and sitting meditation was given a lot of importance by the Buddha, right? So, wakefulness, walking, sitting meditation, even at the night when you are lying down, so you should lie down in that particular posture and keep your mind focused on when you will be getting up. When you, they are committed to wakefulness, the realized one guides them for the come mendicant, have mindfulness and situational awareness. So in your daily tasks, act with situational awareness while going out and coming back, looking ahead and aside, bending, extending the limbs, bearing the outer robe, bowl and robes, when eating, drinking, chewing, tasting. At all times, urinating, defecating, walking, standing, sitting, speaking, keeping silent. All times be mindful. When mindfulness and situational awareness they have, then Buddha says that I advise the mendicant to 
frequent a secluded lodging that means uh, go up go to a place which is like secluded right uh, like a wilderness root of a tree hill and after you turn from the meal sit down cross legged set your body straight establish mindfulness and and giving up ill will and malevolence may they meditate with a mind rid of ill will full of compassion for all living beings so loving kindness meditation practice loving kindness meditation clear your mind of all ill will then giving up dullness and drowsiness they meditate with a mind rid of dullness and drowsiness perceiving light giving up restlessness they meditate a mind without restlessness giving up doubt so basically giving up the five hindrances they they give up the five hindrances and then they they enter into the four ups options now this is a bit technical more for the monastics but for the lay people what we can do is our pra vipassana practice right inside practice so then entering into first second third fourth ups option which are the four jhanas you can research on four jhanas at your end then um, then moglana asked that you know why some do all of them achieve, achieve the goal uh, so buddha said some succeed while others fail so moglana asked why is that so buddha gave example that suppose i uh, uh, you know the 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 kind of direction to rajaka you tell a person that this is the direction this is the route to rajaka and he goes there and another person you tell the same instruction he is not able to reach there so he receives the same second person also receives the same instruction but he could not reach so but so uh, so he says uh, what is the difference he asked brahmin so brahmin said what i can do about that master i am the one who shows the way so buddha says similarly though in the same way though extinguishment is present the path leading to extinguishment is present and i am present to encourage them still some of my disciples instructed and advised like this achieve the ultimate goal extinguishment while some of them fail what i can do about that brahmin the realized one is the one who shows the way so buddha always is there to show us the way right he cannot give the salvation to us we need to practice at our end so then towards the end uh, uh, moglana says that all of all kinds of fragrant roots spikenard is said to be the best of all kinds of fragrant hardwood red sandalwood is said to be the best of all kinds of fragrant flower jasmine is said to be the best in the same way master gautama's advice is the best of contemporary teachings so at that buddha's time there were very uh, different different teachings different different masters that were teaching at the same time but moglana said that master gautama's teaching is the best and he became a lay follower who went to went for uh, uh, refuge for life to master gautama so this is uh, moglana sutta ganaka moglana sutta middle discourses 107 i hope it was useful and insightful in some way please do reflect on it and please do share your insights and thoughts in the comment section namo buddhaye namo buddhaye